Hello lovebirds, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So, as you can probably tell from the title, this is going to be one of my most sarcastic videos ever. Because this week I had the absolute pleasure of having to renew my driver's license. And for that, you have to get your picture taken. Now, I will admit, this is one of the most impossible assignments that you can get to look at least halfway decent on this little three by four. But I did find out some little tricks and hacks on how to confuse the guy who's photographing you and probably hating his life into looking halfway decent instead of looking like Schmeagel. So if you're interested, let's get started. So first up, let's talk about jewellery. So unfortunately, in a lot of countries, you cannot wear any jewellery. Luckily in Holland, you can. So I've got this amazing style by Ana Luisa, which is a sustainable jewellery brand from New York, and they make incredibly beautiful luxury jewellery for really fair prices, because they don't do that really weird luxury markup. Now, what I also love about this brand is that they have the goal to be carbon neutral by the end of this year and maintain that for the rest of their existence. So way to go on them. The top is by Zara and um, yeah, let's get into makeup. When talking about makeup for your picture, your little three by four, which honestly is impossible to look good in, um, I've got a few little tricks. Now, one of the most important tricks that I have for you is that you need to take in consideration what kind of lighting they have. Usually, it's a little bit too far overhead, which will create a lot of shadows in your face. And it's also, nine times out of 10, so bright that anyone that does have color or pigmentation or beautiful melanin, they will look whitewashed. And me, personally, I usually look like Casper the white ghost, the friendly ghost. So we need to keep in mind that whenever you are getting your picture taken, that there is still shape in your face. I had this a few years ago where I decided, oh, I want to look really natural and radiant and gorgeous on my passport. Uh, not a good idea. So for my three by four, for my little tiny picture, I go in with a lot of shaping and a lot of it. So this is really out of my normal routine outside of my normal perspective because I know how they can mess you up in that little tiny three by four. So let's get started. First up, start with a really well prepped skin. Make sure you're moisturized, your skin is happy, uh, and then get into makeup. So if you need an extra 10 minutes to just let your skincare soak in for a while, do that. Okay, then, we go on to contouring. Now, I've got this beautiful um, Inner Glow Cream Pigment in Intuition by Rituel de Fille. And this is one of those contour shades that is just perfect. Now, you can see how grey it is, and that is exactly what I am looking for in a contour. Now, I know I'm going about this a bit differently than what I usually do. And that is because everything is visible on these pictures. It's just not great at all. It's horrendous, honestly. So I go in with my contour and my highlight before I go in with foundation, because then it looks like it all is coming from the inside out instead of looking like it's on top. You really want to carve out your cheekbone. So, the easiest way to do this is by placing your thumb. I've got a whole video on contouring, non-touring. Take a look at that. We are going to do this twice as thick today for the passport fixture. I quite love doing this because I know that later on, on the picture, I will actually have shape in my face instead of looking like a full on white blob. So everywhere where I would normally really lightly contour, I go in with a lot more. You know, in these kind of instances, it's really handy that I don't have any hair because you have to get rid of all of your hair in your face. Now, I am very much used to it. If you are not, I would just suggest doing a really nice tight high ponytail so that there's a little lift on the back of your head and your skin is being pulled tight by doing a tight ponytail. You'll be snatched as <laughs> And just go in with the heavy 
machinery which are fingers and just carve out where I want my shape to be a lot more pronounced so I definitely definitely recommend doing your jawline there now beyond having heavy contour all over my face I also recommend to contour your nose because if you do not contour your nose for your passport picture or for your driver's license it will disappear into thin air and you will leave like a blank space with two dots in the middle and it will just look creepy. Yeah, I've had that for quite a while actually. <laughs> now for me it's really bizarre to go so heavy on my makeup and my contour because normally I would never wear this in broad daylight because it really, really does look more like drag makeup than anything else. Um, but I have learned my lesson so like a couple of years ago, I went to this really bad guy who took my picture. Now, he almost literally had the light right above my head. And, you know, I decided to go all natural. Honestly, I looked a decade older. Me and my boyfriend went at the same time and we both looked like we had been hit by a bus and uh, we didn't really recover afterwards. There, a little shadow right above the tip of your nose and then later on we are going to do everything that is really beautiful like the eye area but for now I'm just going to lightly blend it in not fully blend it in but just lightly blend in that contour see so it's not so pronounced just a little light light blending because we want to leave that intensity because we're going to go over it with a full cover foundation Make sure that it doesn't look like brown soot, but leave the intensity. I still look dirty AF, but that will change once we get to foundation. Now, before we continue with foundation, I'm first going to highlight my skin. So I'm going in with a concealer that is a bit lighter than my own skin shade, and I'm just going to get rid of all of the parts where I want a bit of a lift off. So for me, obviously, that is the under eye circles and I want a bit of light right underneath there just to make sure that everything pops forward and that it doesn't look like I am dead tired on my pictures. All right, then I want my cheekbones to look really high. So I go into that cheekbone area with just a lighter shade of concealer because that will be much more effective on a picture than having a shimmery highlight. Because the shimmery highlight, honestly, it's only visible if you move your face around and if you can look at the camera like that and be like, oh, my highlights are popping. Doesn't happen because we have to be full frontal camera. Is that the correct word? Because I think full frontal is something more like tip of the chin to make that pop forward. Now, one of the, also those areas that you really wanna concentrate on are the nasal labial folds and the outer corners of your mouth. So I go into this area, give that lift off. And then one of those spots that is always visible if you've got overhead lighting or bad lighting is this part. There is a natural shadow there. So I'm going to get rid of that. Then a bit on the center of the forehead. I also want my jawline to be visible. I don't want this to disappear. Let's get on to foundation. I am going in with IT Cosmetics Your Skin But Better CC Plus. Now, I carry this around a lot. With a buffing brush, I'm going to just distribute all of that foundation all over my face, but dabbing it because I don't want to move any of that contour or any of that concealer around. So I'm just going to tap it all over. And I love this one because it's full cover, but it doesn't leave your skin really matte or dry looking. Then I'm gonna go in with my beauty blender and I'm just going to blend everything out. Now, obviously you might be thinking, well, why the hell did I do all of my contour and highlighting before I went in with my foundation? Trust me, the camera sees it all. Now I'm just using one pump of foundation to distribute over my face. So it's not really that full cover. It really does look like full cover. One of the things I just wanna mention before we continue on to other products is 
Please do not forget the tip of the ears because there's nothing weirder than having a beautiful flawless looking face but then with these red ear tips. And now you have to wear your hair back. You have to get it out of your face so your ears will be on show. So don't forget about the ears. All right, now, before we are going to powder everything off, I'm going back in with that lightest shade of concealer. And I'm just going to concentrate a bit extra on those under eye creases that I've got going on, these under eye hollows. Now, you really wanna pay a bit of extra attention to that part and place that lighter concealer right in that hollow because you will see it when that picture is taken. Voila, the final step I'm going to take is do a bit of cream blush. Now this is the Fenty Beauty Cheeks Out in Strawberry Drip. And this is a good way to get a bit of that inner color coming out. Now I know this is like much more than I would ever do for a normal makeup routine, but taking the extra steps to get different colors on your skin with cream products before you go in with your powder products that will all peek on through. Final part is a bit of cream bronzer to give your face a little bit of color, a little bit of warmth. Now you want warmth in the right places. You do not want warmth in the wrong places like your contour, that should be a shade color. So now I'm going in with the Milk Makeup. It's a matte bronzer stick in baked and just pop that onto the cheekbones but definitely above your contour and then give that all a final blend with your beauty blender all right it's time for powder now very important step use a powder puff to press in all of your powder now we are not baking we are just pressing it in really firmly now you need a powder that does not create any flashback on photography. So make sure that you've got the right powder for this. Now my second tip for this is, if you're gonna powder off, use different shades of powder. Because we've already done all of that work to create definition and shape in our face, it would be such a shame to let it all go to waste with our powder step. So I'm going in with White Sand by A Magic Setting Powder by Juvia's Place, which is quite nice and light. And then I've got Blondie Setting Powder, Easy Bake Loose Baking and Setting Powder by Huda Beauty to set the rest of the face. You could either use your beauty blender for your under eye powder or a powder puff. The one thing that I would recommend for this step is to press it in quite Firmly. I was going to say firmly, but that's not a word. Firmly. Also quite important, because I've made this mistake before, is to not stretch your under eye area when you are placing your powder. Just stay relaxed. Now, as you can see, I am using my beauty blender to create a bit more light on the outer corners of the eye. And this way I'm already mapping out what my eye shape should be. Now we're gonna go on to a eyeliner and eyeshadow and all of that kind of stuff later on. But for now, it's just about mapping out where that eye shape should go. Now, if you're smart, you're going to focus this lighter powder on all of the areas where we have already placed that lighter shade of concealer to help all of those parts move forward when light hits it. So tackling the chin, and the outer corners of the mouth. And then also nasal labial folds. And then a bit on the forehead, because that is one of those parts that will reflect light like nothing else. So you wanna concentrate on the center of that forehead, making sure you've got your light there, but keep it small, because the higher you will go, the larger your forehead will look. So keep it to a nice little tiny circle right above your brows. Now I'm gonna go in with my darker shade of setting powder and I'm gonna set the rest of the face. I'm gonna use my powder puff for this because I can press it into that little top part quite nicely. 
So I'm going in with the Laura Mercier blush in Rosé, which is a beautiful, quite neutral, natural colour. And I'm going to use that to accentuate the cheekbones just a tad more. I don't want to go into that highlighted area too much. I just want to make a beautiful blend between the two. Marry them, if you catch my drift. Then obviously I'm also going to go in with a powder bronzer. I'm using Anastasia Beverly Hills powder bronzer in the color Saddle. And I'm gonna use a slightly larger brush for that. Now what I normally do is I dip my brush into the product and then just blend it together on the mirror before going into the face. Again with bronzer, go a bit higher up than you would with your contour. It's just a different placement than contour would be. And then I'm also just going to touch the bridge of the nose just a little bit to get a bit more color going in on that area. And then the bottom of the chin. Final powder step is just to accentuate the contour we've placed on our noses a tad more. I think that's a theme for this all over video, it's just, just a tad more. So I'm going in with Shade and Light Contour Palette by KVD Vegan Beauty. And I love this one because it's so blendable and it's so easy to use. So I'm going in with the same brush that we used for our cream contour and just accentuating that a tiny bit more. And trust me, I've done a lot of pictures without nose contour because I always felt like it was so unnecessary to wear a nose contour. And I still, still feel that way for day-to-day -day normal wear. But when it comes to your driver's license or passport, you definitely want to go in with a nose contour. But let's talk about eyebrows. I've made this mistake so many times that I can tell you how to not make this mistake ever again. Now, because of the power of the light, my normal brow do just doesn't work. So, the biggest problem with this is that the flash will eliminate most of your brows, which also means I need to go in with a little bit more punch than I would usually use. So I'm going in with the YSL Beauty Couture Brow Slim in number five, and I'm just going to accentuate the shape of the brow before going in with any brow hair strokes. And next I am going in with the MAC Cosmetics Shape and Shade Brow Tint in the color Taupe just to get the illusion of brow hairs going. And they don't have to do many, just enough so that the camera thinks that there are actual hairs there. Then to finish up the brow area, make sure to go in with a heavy duty brow gel. So I'm going in with the 24 hour brow set by Benefit Cosmetics because it does keep my brows up all day because it's quite a tough and sturdy brow gel. First use the flat side just to get all the brow hairs covered and then I brush them through to make sure that they keep their shape. Now that we've come this far, let's continue on with eyes. Now I thought I had already explained how I do my smoked outliner quite often, but let's go through it again. So the one thing you wanna do is grab onto a waterproof eye pencil very important, you do not want everything to be stamping onto the top part of your eyeballs because it will not look very handsome. Okay, so I'm just blending out the little creases I've got right here. And there's still a bit of powder on this beauty blender, so that is prepped enough. Now I'm gonna go in with the YSL Beauty, the Saint du Regard in waterproof, and I'm just going to line out the outer corners of my eyes. I really don't want to go past the halfway point of my eyeball. So what I'm going to be doing now is grabbing onto that same brush that I use for contour. I just wipe it off on a little towelette. And then, let me see, it's Cosette 250, D250. And then I'm just going to blend out the outer corners with my eyes open. So I can actually see where that black is gonna go. But I kinda wanna make it look like it's all going upwards. So I want a lifting effect to the eye because as you can see with this eye, it kinda has that Labrador effect 
I'm just going to add a tiny bit of eye pencil to the outer corner and then I'm going to angle my brush into the right direction and just make small sketchy movements to wing it out a bit. Now again, not going for a full blown out eyeliner, I just want to get a lifting effect going on the eye. Now you can wing them out as far as you want and then just connect the two together. Now you can see, hopefully you can see what kind of effect that has on my eyelids. Now I'm going in with the Soft Glam palette by Anastasia Beverly Hills. I understand why this is a bestseller because it just has these beautiful neutral tones that are just amazing. So the first thing I'm going to do is grab onto Noir and just press that into that little soft liner. So I'm going to grab onto a flat eyeshadow brush and I'm going to go in with Tempera, which is a very light but matte eyeshadow. I'm just going to use that to accentuate the brow bone. Then I'm going to go in with a really tiny blender brush and I'm going to go in with Burnt Orange, which is this pretty shade. And I'm going to be using that to accentuate the crease. I'm also going to be marrying that right into that contour that we use for the nose area and create a open space on the inner corner whilst accentuating the crease. Now with that flat shader brush, I'm going to go back into that really light color and I'm just going to accentuate the inner corners of the eyes and bring a bit more light into that area. Then to deepen up the outer corners, I'm going to go in with Cypress Amber, which is this beautiful dark brown tone. And I'm just going to accentuate the outer corners of the eyes a little bit more. Then with whatever is left on your brush, just drag it out towards the temples and elongate that eye area just more. More. Also, whatever is left on this brush, I'm going to use that to accentuate the lower lash line. And just think about it like this. It would be very unnatural to not have any shadows underneath something that is round. But we decide where the shadow goes. I mainly concentrate this shadow on the center of the lower lash line instead of on the outer corners. Because if we concentrate the shadow over there, it could diminish that lifting effect that we've created because we are rounding it out. And we kind of want to make it feel like we've got a facelift going on. Now, the only spot that I'm going to be applying a little bit of shimmer is on the inner corners of the eyes. And I'm going to use the Linda Harburg highlight for that. Just to get a bit of a sparkle going. Not much. Just a hint. There. Now it's time for lashes. Now, obviously, you can't really do falsies on your passport or on your driver's license, so I'm just going to go in with a shitload of mascara. I'm going to go in with the YSL The Shock Mascara just because it's the one mascara that can get my lashes fluffy yet also extremely, extremely voluminous. I usually use some zigzag motions on the base of the lashes and then flick the mascara wand outwards so that the tips stay nice and fluffy. To finish this whole shebang of a look, it is imperative that you use a lip liner. I've done it without before and even lips as big as mine have disappeared on pictures completely. So. I do recommend to go in with a nice nude lip liner to just accentuate the fact that you have some. So I'm going in with the Lord and Berry 3037 Ultimate Lip Liner in Tanned Nude. And this is one of those pencils that I've been using a lot lately and with reason because it's such a stunning natural tone. And none of the people at the photography place complained about my makeup, which made it acceptable for driver's licenses, passports, etc. Because most of this makeup look is ultra matte and we've contoured and we've shaped 
it can be quite nice to have at least one reflective item on your face. So I'm going in with the Bobbi Brown Lip Gloss in number three petal, which is one of my absolute favorites. It just gives this really beautiful rosy tone to your lips and makes them look luscious and healthy and sparkly. To marry everything together, I'm going to be using a little bit of setting spray just to make sure that all of these textures and all of these layers marry together really, really well. Now, I believe this is a brand new one. This is the Urban Decay All A Nighter Ultra Glow. So it's a long lasting makeup setting spray, but it does give you a little bit of glow. So I'm curious to find out if there's like a shimmer in there. Okay, so no shimmer, but it does leave this incredibly beautiful glowy sheen to your skin. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to be protecting the eye area from the setting spray by placing my hand on top of it. And then I'm gonna focus the setting spray on the outer corners, outer perimeters of the face. So you do have that really beautiful light reflection all around the outer perimeters without losing that really nice matte look in the center. Well, there you go, lovelies. The finished result for my passport or driver's license ready makeup. Now, I think this is probably the most full glam I've been on YouTube so far, and I must say I've really enjoyed it. It's kind of nice to play dress up once in a while, and I will say that it has helped me to get a better result from my passport slash driver's license picture because from all of the ones that I've made so far in my life, I'm most pleased with this one. And to be able to do that at 30 instead of 20 is quite a nice surprise. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. If you've liked this video, please subscribe to my channel. And if you have any questions, please pop a direct message to me on Instagram and I'll answer you quickest on there. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye. Ooh, final tip. There's one little trick that a photographer taught me and that is really, really simple. The only thing you have to do when you're sitting down in that chair is to straighten your shoulders, then what you can do with your head and with your neck is instead of being all relaxed like this, is to push it forward like a turtle. And I know it's going to feel like you look absolutely ridiculous, but instead you're probably going to look quite snatched in that chair and make sure that you don't have a double chin on your picture. From this to this.